Hey, welcome back to the Can Attack podcast. We're back with Eric Boone, and uh, you got to pronounce your company name, man. I'm never going to get it. Maristematics. All right. <laughs> A little fun. Um, so uh, you moved to Europe. You're, you're, you're helping with operations over there. Uh, talk to me. What's going on in Europe? What's going on with you? Yeah, well, uh, I'm actually uh, fairly freshly back from a trip to Portugal. I um, was uh, honored to give the uh, opening keynote for Canna Portugal, which was one of the first um, business to business uh, sort of full cannabis conferences where they're discussing hemp and uh, theoretically THC, because that's still a fairly new uh, subject over there. So it was kind of a first for Portugal. Uh, it was a great time. There's, uh, there's so much uh, going on over there right now. I mean, uh, Portugal is a unique market in that they decriminalized all, uh, all drugs like 20 years ago uh, in the early 2000s. And um, <clears throat> that's been good in a lot of ways. But for cannabis in particular, it's been a little bit, it's sort of grouped it in with everything else. Uh, so their, their medical program, which was just passed in 2018, is still fairly nascent. Uh, however, we, we had some huge news out of Europe yesterday uh, with Germany. Um, you know, essentially they had a, a sort of a side caucus on uh, the future of recreational cannabis in Germany. And uh, they came out with not a, a huge surprise, but uh, definitely an, another big step forward. Uh, they came out um, committed to creating a recreational cannabis program for Germany. And as goes Germany, soon follows France, uh, very likely Spain's behind. You're, you're going to see the dominoes fall in Europe in, in yeah. fairly short order, I would anticipate. Maristomatics loves to be there at this time because we are uh, predictive and prescriptive analytics for uh, cannabis enterprises, particularly vertically integrated ones. However, we've introduced a new product called Perfect Tax. Uh, which is uh, essentially a modification of our AI-driven price elasticity model uh, that's specifically geared toward governments. And what it allows uh, the AI to do is essentially use price elasticity models and sales data to find that sweet spot in the tax rates. As you know, a huge problem, uh, particularly in California, is that the governments just got so greedy with, uh, with their taxation that they end up uh, providing a tremendous amount of fuel uh, to the to the unregulated markets, to the traditional markets. Um, at, at, I, I believe the latest that I've heard in, in even in California still to this day is only about a third of all the sales in the state are uh, take place within the regulated markets. So all that four billion dollars of of cannabis that they're selling every year in California, that number is probably closer to twelve, and they're only capturing uh, taxes on a third of that. So, um, you know, with uh, using AI and, and big data analytics, we can hit that sweet spot on the taxation to figure out, you know, what are the cons what's the consumer going to accept and what will allow the government to get as, you know, a smaller portion of the pie, but you're growing the pie pretty considerably by taking, um, you know, some wind out of the sales of the unregulated market. Um, yeah, so that's question. sort of one of the messages that we're delivering to Europe. And we, we really hope that Germany is going to uh, bite. Our, they love analyzing stuff. So we're, we're really hopeful that, um, that Maristomatics will be well received by uh, not just our, our uh, friends in, in Portugal, uh, but throughout the, the greater European market as well. Yeah. So a couple of questions. One is um, I saw something fly by that California just lowered the taxes to 15 percent I, I like with uh, the last several days i don't know if you know anything about that i saw a couple linkedin posts and randy Rowe, my friend and yours talked about it too yeah i uh, i didn't do a deep dive onto that i noticed it myself but i uh what i have not heard any evidence of and i could be wrong on this is that it wasn't like this is more of a crapshoot like i don't know how they're, they're just sort of um i i don't know how data driven the decision was for that particular tax rate uh because i mean you know a straight up 15 percent is not that's not what ai rates look like they they're you know they're highly you know would be 15.8732 or something like that yeah <laughs> and so like they, when they hit the sweet spot like they really really hit the sweet spot and so uh 15 probably is not too far off and another thing that i like uh hearing uh, out of California is that I believe 
there's an even lower uh, preferential tax rate for uh, social equity candidates, people from disproportionately impacted communities yeah. like the war on drugs. So there's even a, a little bit of an extra incentive to, to help uh, balance out the playing field a little bit more, which I, I'm always happy to see. Yeah, cool. And then the maybe the final question I have, and we'll certainly circle back to you next quarter, would be um, the, uh, you know, we're just coming off an event. That's not why we're here on this podcast. That's that's a whole nother podcast. But um, with Europe, uh, publishing partner, Global Cannabis Times, they're evaluating uh, the feasibility of a show uh, like in Spain. And I would like to know and be able to tell them, um, did your show have legs? Do you think a show in Europe has legs, right? Because there's always a promoter. Well, you've been in show business. You've been involved in HempFast. Um, do, do you have a good feeling for the opportunity for cannabis events in Europe? See, uh, I, I would actually argue that that is probably where the value is uh, right now. I, I genuinely, and this is coming off of, um, and I, I'm sure that I'm going to get, um, you know, hurled with, uh, with, with uh, disagreement on this, but I mean, at, uh, at MJ BizCon last year, I had a really tough time sifting through the value of that absolute behemoth of a show. And it seems like, uh, you know, a lot of the new players there kind of didn't have their feet wet. And a lot of the established players have already sort of, you know, seen the ROI not come through and have opted to, you know, either have a much downplayed uh, presence there or uh, just, you know, buy attendance tickets and walk around and have conversations on the floor. Yeah, that's what I do. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, same, same here. We didn't have a booth there in, in, um, in last year in this 2021 show, but um, the um, you know, I, I think that the, the shows like this Portuguese show was, was much smaller, but you also had some who's who there, like Mila, the hash queen was there from Amsterdam. Uh, you had captain Hooter there. Who's a, a pretty good on a social media circuit and uh, an expat cannabis guy throughout Europe goes back through the day. Uh, I was traveling over there with Jack Harris' son, Dan. Uh, Dan accepted an, a, a lifetime legalization award on behalf of his father. So that was pretty cool. So you have some, uh, you have some bigger and bigger names like starting to, to hit the markets, but the shows are still, uh, you know, by our standards, fairly small. Like it was, in a, it, it's it, okay. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I'm fine with that. Uh, you don't need 330 different CBD distributors at one show. Like it is just too, it's too much. So, uh, you know, I mean, the, the smaller, more intimate shows were really nice. A, a lot of cool innovations were showcased, uh, like 8,000 kicks. They're, they're like the, the cannabis shoes, the hemp shoes and stuff like that. They're all over Facebook. Uh, the founder, the president and founder was at that show, uh, Hawk and his wares. It was, it was pretty cool. So that you still have some, some good high level accessibility. And I genuinely feel that there's, there's more genuine potential ROI in those shows because they haven't become so ubiquitous yet. Yeah. There's still something fairly unique about it. As a matter of fact, that show, we probably actually got hurt a little bit by the fact that there was a, uh, there was a medical cannabis show that, um, you know, a, a cynic would say perhaps somewhat, um, you know, dastardly, uh, just happened at the last minute to uh, hold their show literally two days before yeah, uh, the daughter can Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's not an uncommon, and and they claimed that they were this the established show because they'd already done it one yeah. whole year. So it was uh, it was one of those annoying situations. But even in in uh, in light of that sort of competing show uh, popping up at the eleventh and a half hour. Uh, the reception was still really good. And, and like, um, you know, there was a lot of coverage on CNN, on Bloomberg there locally. Oh, wow. Uh, it was picked up in uh, print media. It was pr picked up on uh, television media. So it's still new enough and unique enough. And, um, and it's not like we're still at the early days. I mean, it's uh, uh, Portugal would be considered an archaic medical program by our standards. And like, probably within a year, that's going to be completely turned on its head. Yeah. Hempfest, Hempfest has some ama has an amazing event planned actually for the end of September. 
because I also, uh, in addition to the uh, the job that makes me my money, uh, the one that uh, takes all my money is my uh, no, my nonprofit volunteer work on the board of directors of Seattle Hemp Fest. 30-year-old uh, fixture in the industry, great in the space. And we're going to actually be scaling our uh, model over to Europe. And we're anticipating a, a fairly well-publicized uh, and well-visited uh, at least 10,000 event in um, in uh, end of September. And there's actually going to be an opportunity to get some free uh, smokable hemp at this event. It's going to be ah. far out. Uh, so it's uh, CBD, not not the not the THC stuff. We're not uh, we're already dealing with local law enforcement and local uh, politicians, but we've got some exciting things planned for Portugal and for Europe. So I, I can't wait to come in and yeah. provide uh, quarterly updates because they will be uh, ample. Fifteen minutes might be inadequate. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll uh, next. You're you're officially our global uh, correspondent. Um, for this. Hey, before I go, I got to run in a second, but before I go, uh, just to clarify, because I'm actually going to spend uh, the, the month of August back in Seattle because of my cannabis related business um, activities. I, y- you know how it goes, Eric. I, 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 if, if I want to maintain those relationships, I, I got to go back to Seattle and, yeah. and maintain the relationship. Um, but that's uh, the month of August. Am I hearing you say you moved Hemp Fest to late September in Seattle? No, no. That uh, the, the Hemp Fest that I'm referring to is actually the Hemp Fest in Portugal, the Hemp Fest in Lisbon. Oh, uh, okay. Be the that's first the over European Hemp Fest. Uh, Hemp Fest, uh, sadly, uh, will uh, the Seattle Hemp Fest. Um, we are fresh off of uh, receiving a, 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 a generous grant from the county as a shuttered venue. Uh, but we don't have the we don't have the runway to do a proper yeah. infest for for 2022. We do, however, have every intention of being back in the park in 2023. But um, just from a, you know, I, I, I was you, we feel like we're sort of out of the woods, and I think for the most part we are. But I mean, I, I went to a, a you know a fairly small event in Portugal. Uh, where everyone was still being, you know, kind of responsible. And, you know, despite having four uh, vaccine shots, I still ended up getting it, like my whole family did. So we, we still have to be a little bit careful. But I think by this time next year, uh, uh, HempFest traditional time is always the third weekend of August, and we will definitely be there for 2023. Yes, sir. I will too. Hey, Eric, I got to run. We'll talk to you next quarter. Hang in there, ma'am. Thank you, Harry. Always a pleasure. All right.